Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. If you're not familiar with me, I am the recordist, vocal producer, and mix engineer for Akon and all things Convict Music, and in this video I want to go over my mix template. So for a long time I wasn't very much into templates, I kind of felt like every record needed to be discovered on its own and get its own unique treatment and everything like that, but as I've matured in my engineering, I've found that there's nothing about a template that prohibits the discovery process of a record. In fact, in a way, it's sort of the opposite, because it gets everything to a point of movement so quickly, the tedium of having to set up all the auxes and everything like that and all the routing, it goes away and gets you into a creative space a lot faster. So I went back to an old template, I started building it uh, out, and I talked to a friend of mine named Keith Ross, who is an excellent engineer, he's mixed for Missy Elliott, Pitbull, uh, Timbaland, basically that whole kind of camp, and, and any offshoot of that camp. A really fantastic engineer, and he gave me a lot of great ideas to improve my template, and what I found is once I got this template going, I've been moving faster, I've been doing better work, and also slightly more consistent work, which is good when you're trying to do an album or an EP and you want consistency in the sound. So with all of that said, I'm going to go over this template. The first place that I want to start here is the bus routing, because that's just something that speeds things up immediately, just having all these buses ready to go. So I have a submix, which everything comes down to, which is controlled by a master fader. And then above that, I have my vocals all bus, where all the vocals end up. Then I have my sound effects, which is swooshes and booms and things like that. Percussion, so any kind of drum element that isn't central to like kick, snare, hat, or whatever the driving treble thing might be. Uh, so hand drums or whatever might be going on there. Then I have my melodics, which would include anything like synths or guitars. Uh, above that, bass. So bass is bass. Uh, then above that, I have two that kind of work together here, a crush track and the drums track. The drums track is the actual bus where all of the primary drums go to, but then the crush track is an aux from that, which does parallel compression. And then lastly, a returns track, and that's going to be all of my delay throws, reverbs, uh, my bass widener, my instrument parallel compression, uh, all that kind of stuff. So all, all of those sort of effects come to the return tracks. So on these tracks, you'll notice that I have some things that have been made inactive, I have some things that are in bypass, and I have some things that are active. Uh, the idea here is that anything that's inactive, I'm saving kind of toward the end and just sort of saving CPU. There's some kind of more CPU intensive plugins involved here. Everything that's in bypass is something that I will intend to use or at least experiment with, but I don't necessarily always use. They're just kind of there and ready to go. And then the crush track here has my active tracks on it where if I use the crush track I will be using these plugins. So let's uh let's break down what some of these are and what they're going to be used for. So let's start with the returns track here. The returns like I said that's my eighth note delay, my quarter note delay, my reverbs here, my chorus, all that kind of stuff. They're all going to come to this return track so I have one plugin that's kind of ready to go and that's just a stereo widener that's going to stretch things out to the side a little bit. I find myself oftentimes stretching out my chorus, my doubler, my delays, like my ping pongs, my reverb, all that stuff kind of benefits from a little stretching so just because I do that so often I have it ready to go. Right under that, we've got my drums track. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. I don't necessarily, necessarily use all three of these things, but sometimes I do use all three of them in this order in conjunction. But I want to explain what they're doing and why I use them, because you might not necessarily want to use the exact same things. There's variations on this that can certainly be very useful. So the first is the Black Box HG2MS from Plugin Alliance. And that is starting on the MW Drum Bus All Rounder. Now, if you have this plugin, you will notice that there are a bunch of presets that start with the letters MW. Everything from 47 down to, gosh, I really went far with it, 73? Oh my god. So anything that's starting with MW, that is a preset that I made, and this Drum Bus All Rounder is designed for exactly this, my mix template. So it's just meant to give a little bit of grit, a little bit of fullness, a little bit of fatness to the overall drum sound. It's fairly subtle, but it produces a nice little harmonic juice that makes the drums just feel a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Right after that, we've got the Gem Overloud 670. I think that you could probably get away with using any solid 670 plugin variation. There are a few of them. I happen to be particularly fond of this one, but that's just me. 
I start on the London mode, which is a little bit darker than the other modes. Sometimes I do switch this, and I have the DC threshold turned a little bit to the right. What that does is it hardens the knee. The Fairchild is a soft knee compressor in its default position. Uh, for drums, a harder knee typically does sound a little bit better, and I have the harmonics turned a little bit to the right just to give it a little bit more color. It already starts with a nice pronounced color, but just a little tiny more tends to be good, and I'll adjust these things as needed. Uh, the threshold, the input, gain that stuff is all in pretty much default position and then the time constant I have on three the reason why I have it on three is because this is not meant to really clamp on the drums this is supposed to be kind of a gentle smoothing and gluing kind of a thing just preventing overs and stuff like that so it's not really supposed to be all that pronounced it's supposed to be fairly subtle and then lastly, on the drum bus, I have the God Particle. Now, a lot of times people use this on their overall mix. I find that it's a it, it's hard for me to use this on the overall mix because you kind of have to mix into it a little bit. However, on drums in particular, it works really, really well to just add a little bit of impact and weight. So I use it a default in 50%, sometimes even a little bit less, but also with the highs pushed up a little bit because I find that in, in adding that weight, it needs like a little bit of a counterbalance to add a little bit of top as well. I don't use the limiter from it uh, for this. The multiband does all the work that I need. And like I said, sometimes I will use just one of these. Sometimes I will use two of them. Sometimes I will use all three and it can create a really, really great effect. Going down here, I've got my crush track. This is the JST Finality. It is a limiter. It's an aggro mode, which is good for drums. It grabs, you know, nice and heavy, creates maybe a little bit of intermodulation distortion, a little touch of that. So this is going to create a really heavy sustain, which is very good for creating like a fatter sound. And then right after that, I've got the JST Transify, which is adding a little bit of the transient back that I'm losing. So you get this very sharp defined transient, and then a heavy sustain. This kind of combination creates a really interesting sound shape that on its own doesn't sound very good, but when blended underneath drums, it accents exactly the right parts. It gives it weight, but also a little bit of sharpness, which is a really cool combination. Uh, again, you can find your own things for this, but I do really like these. Uh, then moving down here on the bass, once again, black box. This time I'm using my bass Woolly Mammoth preset as a starting point. That happens to be one of my favorites. It works really, really well on low end. And then right underneath that, Melodics. So this is a cool move. Um, I really like this. I definitely encourage you to experiment with this, steal this move here. But this is a very subtle saturation that's occurring on the side information only. So a lot of the times with my pop production, hip hop production, uh, those kinds of mixes where you have that very strong center drum, so kick, snare, most of the bass, hat, it's all kind of living in the center, vocal in the center. A lot of the times my melodic elements, like my guitars and my synths, they're getting pushed out to the side. This emphasizes their energy on the side in a really cool, unique way. I, I like this quite a bit, and I tend to prefer the tube saturation, but there are all of them work for different reasons. They all just kind of sit differently in the frequency world. That's really the only difference. But this is affecting only the side signal, so it's not the whole signal of the melodics. And the band starts at about 500 hertz. Sometimes I'll go up or down depending on the exact nature of it. If it's warmer sounds, I move it down. If it's more twangy sounds, I move it up. Uh, but that's usually a good starting place. So percussion, I just start here with uh, Transify. And this is a really weird one. It doesn't always work. But I turn the cutoff on the midband all the way up to like 22 kilohertz. And then I push the attack all the way up. And sometimes that does this thing where like there's this like distortion of sorts, this like hyping of sorts that happens in the top end that really makes the sound localizable and kind of step out of the speakers in a weirdly three dimensional way. Now, this is not part of my mixtape, but very oftentimes I will find myself bringing up the Tomo Audio Labs Lisa, which is also a plugin alliance plugin. And I will go over to where it says Matt Weiss. Hey, that's me. And where it says percussion hand drum slap, that can sound really, really good on a percussion bus as well. So I I might add this to the template officially, but it's just something that I've been doing very recently. All right, down to the vocals all bus, I have Straw, which is an Acoustica plugin. It has a really, really nice, clean, but not like sterile clean, like 
clean but with a vibe top end to it. So it's a 10k boost at, at, with just 2 dB on it. So all the vocals, sometimes they just need to be a hair brighter at the end. I pull that on, but I don't always use this. It's sometimes it's off, sometimes it's on. Then we get down to my master bus here, and I do not use all of these things. I use some of these things some of the time. So I have two acoustica plugins here. One is Amber 4, the other one is Pearl 2. Both of these have a different sound. If I want something that has like a very shiny, shimmery kind of sound, like like a like a lot of the pop records that I do, Amber is really good for that. It's got like this very round low end. It's got this very shimmery top end, and I like it for that sort of style. For something that needs to be just a little bit punchier, a little bit more mid-focused, I tend to like Pearl 2. I think that that's got like a slightly more forward sound to it. It's not quite as pretty, but it still sounds really, really good, and you can just, you can boost for days. So like if you need to add a, a million dB of sub for whatever reason at the end of a mix, you can just pump like 12 dB in there and it sounds smooth as silk. And then I have the Plugin Alliance uh, townhouse compressor, which is kind of SSL-ish in the way that it works. It's got kind of a little bit of like 300 to 400 hertz saturation, which can add a little bit of thickness to a mix as well. So this is usually for thickening up sound if I still need a little bit of weight. I find that I don't use this compression as much now that I have the God Particle on my drum bus. It kind of does some of the work. Uh, and then I have standard clip ready to go, but again, I don't find myself using standard clips so much these days because now for my final limiter, I'm using master plan. I really, really keep meaning to do a video on this because I love this plugin. I love the people behind this plugin. I don't have any kind of endorsement with them or sponsorship or anything, but this has replaced FabFilter Pro L2 for me officially. And this is my starting default where the in is zero dB, the loud is turned up six dB and the clean is on, but only at 20 percent The clean kind of opens up the low mids. So sometimes when you're mixing a record and you start pushing into the limiter, sometimes the low mids get a little clogged up, like the upper bass frequencies to low mids. This kind of opens that up a little bit, which I find to be pretty useful. So this is my just sort of default position, but all this stuff can change pretty quickly depending on what the mix ends up sounding like. So that's my buses for my actual subgroups. Then I have my effects. And my effects are, I, I keep adding more and more. I've got like a pretty good number of them. I'll, I'll kind of go down here. So I have three reverbs, which are primarily dedicated to my vocals. And I use different ones for different reasons. The first one, which is inactive right now because I'm, uh, exporting my audio directly to the screen sharing that I'm using to film this. Uh, but this is the, uh, analog out or the digital out, I'm sorry, for my Bricasti M7. And that tends to be the reverb that I use the most for vocals, particularly when I'm doing pop vocals. It's just a really lush, smooth, clean reverb that gets along and makes everything sound really hi-fi. So I like this one quite a bit. It's on there pretty often. And there's certain presets that I tend to start with. Um, London Plate is a common one that I use. St. Gerald's Hall is a common one that I use. And if I want something that's a little bit more stylistic, I use the Waving Bloom as a starting point pretty often as well, although I usually need to shorten the decay time. Uh, if I'm going in the box and I want something really, really creative and interesting, I love ROM. I start with the Cosmic Keys preset because that one is just so cool. Uh, but there's so many different ways to get like really, really great sounds out of this. It's also good for like one-time events and throws because it's just such a like colorful, pronounced reverb. It's very cool. And then right underneath that, this reverb is... Uh, not necessarily the most well-known reverb, but it's a really, really cool one. It's called the Quant X from Relab. Relab makes the 480L that I use pretty often as well, but I've been really digging this thing more. It's got a little bit more character to it. It's got a lot of like fun imperfections to it. And if you happen to get this reverb, hey, look, this one also comes with my presets. This Matthew Weiss guy is everywhere. Uh, I start on Budapest Gothic. That is the first reverb that I made as a preset for this. The other one I like for vocals a lot is Castle Courtyard. Castle Courtyard is more of like an arena type of sound where it's going to make it feel like you're in a bit of a stadium or something like that. But Budapest Gothic is more like just sort of a, a, a smooth, ethereal kind of adds ambience, but doesn't give you necessarily like a defined space kind of a sound. It's really, really cool. We'll probably hear it in a second. Uh, underneath that, quarter note, an eighth note, and then these bypassed Pro C2s here 
have their key to the Vox sidechain. So my vocals might go to a quarter note or the eighth note, and then sometimes, not always, I might want to duck it so that when the vocals are in, the eighth note or quarter note is pushed down a little bit, and then in the gaps between where the vocal lines occur, it comes up and becomes a little bit more pronounced. It's a really cool way of having the effect of a lot more delay without getting any of the muddiness that sometimes delays can create. Right underneath that, this one is kind of a gem, actually. This is... So, a lot of people have a lot of different tastes in chorus effects. This one is really unique. It's the PSP B scanner, which is technically more of like a Leslie effect, but I really like some of the different kind of things you can get from it. They have a couple of presets here, like Wow Chorus and Stereo Chorus that sound really good. Beauty of Scanner also sounds really cool, although it's a little less chorus. It's like a mix of a chorus and like an auto panner, but it's a really cool, unique sound, and I like to incorporate it into my own mixes. I say at least try it out. It may be your thing, it may not be, but it's pretty darn cool. And then I have Echo Boy set to Echo Boy's Galaxy. Echo Boy's Galaxy is kind of my like big splashy reverb throw. So if I want something to just like a certain word to like echo out over the mountains, but it's just like one word, I'll use that as a throw. Sometimes I replace this with other things like ROM or, you know, some combination of delays or something like that. But this is a fun starting place. It's one where I'm always pretty happy with the result. Okay, underneath that, I have my instrument parallel. Uh, it's not, it could be used for anything. It could be used for vocals or whatever, but it is primarily designated to instruments, and it's just the MV2 just basically cranked. <laughs> MV2 is a really cool thing. Like, it, it's one of those, like, better button kind of plugins where you, you put it on anything and it just sounds a little bit fuller and a little bit better. And then right underneath that, I have my bass widener. My bass widener is... Uh, an interesting thing, it starts with distortion. Again, can be any distortion, but I really like the Safari Pedals Gorilla Drive. Uh, this is a very, like, uh, uh, Ibanez overdrive pedal type of thing, but it just sounds really, really good. So this is cranked. You can see the inputs all the way up, the outputs all the way down, and the idea is to create buzz and overtones and color, and then I take out the lows. So it's the bass range, but it's not, like, the sub-bass range. And then after that, we have an imager where I am widening things out. So I'm taking these overtones that I'm generating and I'm pulling them apart and creating a stretched bass sound with that. I find myself using this chain very, very frequently, but it's basically distortion, high pass filter, imager, uh, or Haas, Haas imager if it's still in mono, right? So those are my general effects there. And then I have a couple of effects uh, buses here that are very much dedicated to vocals specifically. So this is one of the places where Keith helped me out a lot. Typically when I was doing parallel compression with vocals, I was using 1176s a lot. Uh, I think that's a sort of standard assumed thing. And I kind of got off using parallel compression on vocals for a while. I w really wasn't doing it. And he pointed out, you know, you might have a lot of... Uh, success if you use an LA-2A style compressor for your vocals as opposed to an 1176. So I tried it, and sure enough, it's a really, really good way to go. Underneath that, I have my vac tube vocals, and this is something where I don't use all of these. I use one or the other. So this is the uh, Analog Obsession Very Moon. This is a very warm-sounding compressor, so it's really good for adding weight. This is also on the warmer side, but it's a little smoother and a little bit more extended. I find that I can get better compression action from this sometimes, but I don't necessarily get the weight from it that I necessarily want. So I audition both of those, and then I have my tube pre, adding a little bit of color here, which will make the vocal feel a little taller. Uh, and then I have an, another saturation here that I may or may not use as well. I go between the tube pre and the tuba, depending on what I want to hear and what I want to use. And it's just a matter of experimentation. I suspect the more that I do use this template and go through it, the more I will kind of isolate which ones I prefer. Then there is a vocal exciter. This I've been using for years. This is like an old country music technique. Uh, you roll off the lows, and where you set that can be anywhere from like 1K to 2K if you want the more traditional exciter, or if you're going for something that's a little bit more uh, top-end focused, then you would do it at around like maybe like 5K, something like that. And then lo-fi, adding just a little bit of distortion, 
and Pro C2, keeping everything under control. And that gives you a top end boost that lifts the top end in a very colorful way and works basically like a typical exciter. The one thing that I will point out here is when I do this, I use linear phase mode. Linear phase mode preserves the body of the vocal a little bit better than nonlinear phase mode. So if you're doing anything similar to this, I really recommend trying it with a linear phase high pass just to see if you like the results better. And then right underneath that, I have a doubler here. So I have four stack doubler. Uh, it's pretty much in default position here. And then after that, I have RVox. And the RVox is in multiple mono mode, so it's compressing each side independently. And this just gives a little bit more thickness and body to the doubler. So, okay, that is the basic formula here. Let's play a little bit of this record down and let's actually engage some of this stuff. Cool, so this is Amira. Uh, she is a convict music slash convict culture artist. And the vocal performance is good. The actual capture is a little bit dull and a little bit peaky in the upper mids. So let's play around with this. Let's get our different effects on and let's get some compression going here. Uh, this is absolutely something that I have to credit Keith for here. He sort of gave me the idea that you start by getting the compression settings on the parallel returns for the vocal and then you mix from there, which is definitely not how I was doing it before. I was always getting my EQ settings first. So this is kind of an adjustment for me, but I like it. I think it works really well. So right off the bat, like I feel like this is pretty close to the level I'm looking for in terms of uh, how much, like how the actual compression is affecting the fullness of the sound. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my other one and I'm going to get a similar thing going. I'm going to pick which chain I want, if I want the Very Moon and Tube Pre, or if I want the Colin and Tuba, or whatever it might be. So I might start with Very Moon and see if I like that. Eh, let's try the Colin here. Yeah, I like I like the Colin better there. And now let's try the tube pre. Yeah, I like that. Let's try the uh tuba. Okay, cool. I like that combination. I'm going to copy these over. I'm going to have both of these going, and now I'm going to set the return levels based on what I want to hear of each one. So I'm going to start with the vac tube. I feel like that was giving me a little bit more of something that I was into. So I, I like that. I feel like the fullness of the vocal is really good. And now what I can do is I can start treating the vocal to make it, well, make more sense, right? So, um, yeah, I think the vocal is maybe like a little bit woofy. So I might grab just a basic whatever EQ. Do, uh, I'm actually going to put this above the auto-tune. Sometimes EQing in front of auto-tune gets better results. And then what I would do is I would go through and I would actually do gain rides 
on the individual tracks here. So I would, you know, push these quieter ones up a little bit, go over here, this quieter section would come up a little bit as well. And I would go through the entire vocal, just sort of managing the levels. So I, uh, when I am done with it, there's not gonna be a ton of volume rides on the back end of it. All of my volume stuff is kind of happening up front, but I get as consistent of a sound as I can across the entire vocal. And then once I've got something that's fairly consistent, then I'll add in just a drop of like gentle compression. And for that, I like the virtual mix rack. And I like the custom opto. And I set it pretty slow. I start over here. Four to one is usually a good starting place. My output usually down a little bit. And then I typically go with flat. Sometimes I vary it depending on exactly what I'm hearing. Boy, I will love you to the end of my day. Boy, I will love you to the end of my day. So let's jump over here. My heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby, pull up for me. Oh, and I my heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby, pull up for me. Oh, and I call you run up for me. My heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby, pull up for me. There you go. That sounds about right. My heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby, pull up for me. Oh, and I call you run up for me. Um. Cool. And then lastly, I might start to work in my doubler and my exciter. So I'll pull up those over here. Let's do our excite. Boy, I will love you to the end of my life. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. So I like a lot of exciter on this. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, but what I'm noticing is this is getting pretty edgy pretty quick. So I'm actually going to raise this corner frequency a little bit so that it doesn't grab quite so much nose tone. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. You are something special me I cannot explain. My heart and my body and shows my baby. Cool. Let's uh, see if a doubler works. There we go. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. You are something special, me I cannot explain. On my heart and my body and shows my baby. Cool. I love it. I think that that's on the right track. And what we're noticing is that I'm getting pretty good results pretty quick. Like, obviously this is not finished. I'm going to have to get into the thick of it uh, to really get it where it needs to go. But we're getting a big, tall vocal sound, very forward, very colorful, but smooth. And so it's not really way off. Uh, let's pull in our Quantex here. Let's add some vibe with some reverb. In no stress, but I will love in you. You are something special me, I cannot explain. On my heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby, pull up for me, oh. So a really nice trick with reverbs, by the way, is to undermix them a little bit. And then if you're going to use delay throws as well, which I probably will for this record, send your delay throw to the reverb as well. It creates the impression of a much bigger reverb while the dry vocal feeds the reverb less. So you get a less swampy vocal at the same time. So a little, little cool tip there. So, okay, I think this is a good starting place for the vocal. Like, it feels pretty solid, and I think we can move on. We can start figuring out the drums. So, let's pull in the black box. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. You are something special me, I cannot explain. On my heart and my body and shows my baby. So, my baby. Really good start. You know, brings the drums forward a little bit in a nice way. Let's pull on the 670, see if that works. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. You are something special me, I cannot explain. On my heart and my body and shows my baby. So my baby, pull up for me, oh, and I call you run up for me. That's hitting pretty hard. In no life stress, but I will love in any way. You are something special me, I cannot explain. On my heart and my body is yours, my baby. So my baby. This really shouldn't be doing more than a couple dB of compression at the end of the day. So this is probably about right. In no life 
just for our love in me way. You are something special me. I'm gonna pull in the side chain filter to get some of the low end to come through a little bit more. In our life's dress for our love in me way. You are something special me, I cannot explain. I'm a heart in my body. And let's try our guard guard god particle here. In our life's dress for our love in me way. You are something special me, I cannot explain. I'm a heart in my body and shows my baby. So my baby pull up. I don't think we need the God Particle on this one. I don't think it's really doing us any favors. And then lastly, we're going to throw in the Crush Track. And again, very quickly, get a drum sound that's not quite finished, but very much in the direction of where I want to go. And of course, I'm explaining everything as I go, so that's kind of slowing things down a little bit. So let's uh, let's get this uh, Spectre on the Melodics here, and then we'll wrap up. In our life's dress, but I will love in me way. You are something special me. We're going to do before and after, and you'll you'll hear how much of a difference it makes and how quickly it starts to feel more finished. And for fun, let's just throw on the widener on the bass, because I, I really like the widener on the bass. So let's pump this all the way up. Let's turn it down just a little bit. Nice. So basically, the idea here isn't necessarily to be getting something that's finished, but to get something that is in line with the final sound and kind of mixing into something that is much closer to being finished. So, all right, going to wrap up here. If you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.